Andy, that I suppose this is as much about the occasion as it is a football match. Um, a lot of people would be very excited for the club. It's it's a great thing, but for you, you've got a football match to win, haven't you? From the manager's perspective in situations like this, how how do you approach all of that? Well, we certainly can't get embroiled in playing the occasion. Uh, it's a football match, as you said, against a team who are higher up than we are, a Championship football team who've got a, a rich history, um, who won on Saturday, who are in a good run of form with a squad full of good players. But football being what it is, there's always an upset. The underdogs don't always lose, and that's the mindset we're going to this game. We're going to, we're going to attack this game. We're going to play on the front foot. We're going to try and be the best versions that we can be of ourselves, and then we'll see what happens. The atmosphere in here on Saturday was, was phenomenal, wasn't it? Even at when, when you got pegged back at 2-2, two -two, yeah. there was still a, a, a real buzz about the place. How will that help you when you go into that game to feed off the crowd? Well, two things I think really, Phil. We, we've won our last two league games, which obviously increases confidence within the players. Um, the, 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 the fans have seen us score six goals in the last two home games. They've seen us putting a really good performance on Saturday. In my opinion, the best performance of the season. The game, the game should have been done at half time. And for the, the mental capacity of the players to overcome going back to Tool was great. The, the atmosphere in, in the ground in the game was really good. And the, probably the last time I can remember it being like that was when we played Swindon in the, in the playoff final, uh, playoff semi final, sorry, when we were, we were behind after the first leg. But the, collectively, the, the, the players on the pitch and the, and the fans um, created an atmosphere which got us on the front foot, um, which energised both parties, fans to players, players to fans, and that's something that we need need more than ever tomorrow night. No, no one expects us to, to win this game, only the people who are working these four walls and who support this football club. They're, they're the only people who think that we've got a chance, and we've got to, we've got to come together. Um, we're going to have to play our best, and Middlesbrough are probably going to have to have a, 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 a bad night and, and not play anywhere near their best. But we, we've got a chance, and we, and we know what the rewards are. Do you, do you enjoy that kind of underdog role in some ways? Um, we, listen, we, we try and approach every game in exactly the same manner, but for us to play in a quarter final of a Car Carabao Cup probably makes it a different different game, doesn't it? Really. So, but it's a game. So we, we're massively looking forward to since we, we beat Mansfield. It seems like a long time ago now. Um, since, since we had that that good night there. And for us to progress to this stage and create history for the football club is obviously brilliant for, for this group of players and, and staff. Uh, and collectively, I want everyone to enjoy it. You know, everyone who works within the football club, I want the fans to come here tomorrow, tomorrow night and, and have a really enjoyable night uh, and support the team. Uh, and I want the, the team to energise the crowd uh, and let's see what happens. Oh, you talked about energising the crowd. What, what else do you want to see from the players? Because I suppose this, this is a night to, to stand up and be counted, isn't it? You can't, like you said, you can't afford to have an off night tomorrow. So what do you want to see from the players when they, you know, before the game, when they go out there, what are you looking for from that? I want them to play the game. I don't want them to get overawed by the occasion. It's another game of football against a, a team in a higher division that we normally play. But underdogs win games. Underdogs win. Teams who aren't fancy to win, win sometimes. Uh, and this club has got a rich history of, of, of overcoming big teams. You know, you think back to, to Rudgy's team who, who beat Tottenham. Um, we knocked Everton out of the FA Cup when they were holders, so you you can win. Things have to go right for you. You might have to get a bit of, bit a little bit of luck as well, uh, but we, we we can compete in this game, and that's a bare minimum that, that I'm going to be asking our players to do. Uh, and you look through this season's results. Um, Reading went to Millwall in the first round and won. Um, so League One teams do beat Championship teams, but say we've we've got to play our absolute best. Um, we, we, we go into this game obviously in a much better mindset, having won our, our last two league games, uh, and in my opinion, playing our best performance of the season on, on Saturday against Wigan. Um, so we're going we're to have to replicate that at the very least. <clears throat> Managed at international level, you've led a team out at Wembley. How did how do you get yourself ready for this mentally, and what what kind, where do you have to kind of be when you when you're getting ready for this? Probably exactly the same as I am for every game. I've got to be honest because, as I've said, there's no point in me trying to do anything different. I, I know what we have to try and do. This is a one-off game. Um, it's a chance to play in the semi-final of the Carabao Cup, the major cup competition, to get to the last four of the competition. And, and when we entered it, um, we played one league game, um, and, it, and it wasn't a very good result, let's say. So that that was the start of it. Now we, we bounced back well against Fleetwood, and we've pr progressed through the last four rounds, uh, and we deserve to get to this stage. Um, Middlesbrough will obviously be on a different path path to us, um, but we, we both both clubs know what the rewards are. 
what do you expect from playing a championship team? Like you said, you, you know, the League One teams can be championship teams, but they're obviously a different standard than what you will come yeah. up against week in, week out. So, so what do you expect from playing a championship team? Well, it should be better than everything than we are, let's, let's be honest. Um, th that's the level, you know, I've, I've worked in the championship and you play at that level for a reason, you manage that level for a reason, you coach at that level for a reason. So we, we've got to prepare... Um, for whatever Middlesbrough can throw at us, um, whatever formation they play, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I say it's more about us and how we we approach the game. We've got to go out there and be the best versions of ourselves. And if, and if we can do that, and that's not enough, at least we know we've given absolutely everything. We, we can crawl off the pitch saying we tried everything we, we possibly could to win this game, and that's what we'll be doing. <clears throat> Andy, I just wanted to go back to Saturday and talk about a couple of performances uh, and Gavin Massey in particular yeah. over the last two games. I just wonder. He seems to have done really well. Is that something tactical or something you've said to him, or you know, have, have you got? Now listen, I think G Gavin's had a, a, a difficult time at the football club for a, a variety of reasons. Um, I, I certainly didn't help him at the start of the season, playing him out out position, and, and we've had a, we've had conversations about that. So, so I take responsibility for that. But <clears throat> excuse me, but get, most of Gavin's career has been spent um, playing wide in a four three three. So certainly when he's now playing wing-back for us, we are trying to get him higher up the pitch. And when we, when we can do that and he can become more effective and he, he, he penetrates really well behind the last line, he makes runs behind, uh, it's then about his, his end product and, and providing assists and, and goals for the team. Uh, and, and that's what we're trying to focus on. I thought that the right-hand side of the team on, on Saturday was, was, was brilliant. I thought you know, there were at least eight out of, eight, nine out of ten performances from, from Jesse, from Alfie uh, and from Gavin. So, again, that. the... the all those players have got to replicate that, but I think Gavin's in a really good place. I think he's playing well. I think he knows you know, from the the first half against Stevenage again, where he was, he was a constant threat, uh, and he backed that up on 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 Saturday against Wigan. Uh, and again, in my opinion, I thought it was his, his best performance for the club. And the crowd were behind him as well, and I think maybe you can see the difference that makes with Ryan Loft as well when he came on. You know, sort of winning over his supporters. Do you think that makes a difference? Yeah, as I said. A lot of things what what have made it a difficult time for Gavin have been out of his control, hundred mm percent. -hmm. Um, so it's it's taken him time, and, and he can only discuss what his thoughts are on them and the reasons why that. But for me, I've let him down at times by playing him out of position, and we've had conversations about that, um, and I've made it more difficult for him because he gets judged when he's out on the pitch, and sometimes it's not been in his natural position. So that's my responsibility. But he needs to replicate Saturday's performance more and more and more. He has to play to do that, obviously. He has to cement the place in the team. But if he can play anything like the level of performance he did on Saturday, he stays in the team, obviously. And Conor Ripley, we know he's got Middlesbrough connections. Just tell us how, how important a signing he's been for you that, <coughs> excuse me, this season. Um, I, th I think he made an, an impression straight away. Um, again, we, we did a lot of work on trying to persuade Connor to come here. Um, it's a position which I think over my time at the football club um, has been difficult to be filled consistently by a number one and I think we've now got that. He's massively supported by, by Jason as well. Uh, they're really good teammates together but he's got a big personality um, and he's probably a man for these kind of occasions. And the last one really I want to ask you about Jesse Debrett. <coughs> How he's linking with Gavin Massey on the right and also generally about Jesse. I think it was a tribunal well, it should have been. I don't know if that's happened yet, and how, how much you're able to tell us about that. You know that sort of situation. I think it will go to tribunal. I'm not sure when that is or if okay. that's happened. I think if it would have done, I would I would, I would know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, I'm, but I'm not sure that's happened. Um, I think that the good thing about Jesse since he came into the football club is he's an absolutely fantastic guy, really down to earth, humble kid, who wants to do everything he possibly can to get better. He wants to extract everything out of himself. He, he listens to advice and he say he, he's developing really well. Uh, we, we've had a number of conversations about a variety of things and, and he's taking information on board. But again, the credit always goes to the player. And I said to you a couple of weeks ago, uh, I think before we played Derby, he was disappointed he wasn't starting that game. Uh, and rightly so. But now he's got, he's got the shirt and, and he's keeping the shirt based on his performances. Sorry, I said last question. You can just give us a fitness and injury update. Sorry, very last one. <laughs> on which players? Uh, Funzo had to come off, didn't he, on Saturday? Yeah. He? yeah, that'll go um, right to the wire, I would think. Um, okay. So he felt, 
he felt something, um, so, so we, we took him off, uh, and we'll keep seeing how that progresses over the next 24 hours. Ryan Loft, obviously the fans really on his, on his side. It was obvious, I think, at the end of the game when he yeah. made those challenges. Just tell me about you know how pleased you are to see him. Yeah, I'm, I'm delighted for him personally because it's been a difficult start to his career uh, for a, a variety of reasons. But I think, think certainly the, the two games we've played this week at home, he's, he's endeared himself to the crowd through absolute commitment, through running, through making tackles, and showing that he really cares. And I think... For, for players at our level, that that's the basic that you have to do. I think that forms a connection with the fans, and you can hear that the crowd cheering and roaring when when our centre forwards making an attack in the last minute to stop a forward pass. So the, the credit is down to him. Um, he's, he's managed to turn it around. He's, he's taken a couple of steps forward. There's more to come. We've got to demand more of him, and he's got to demand more of himself. But it, it's it's a better last couple of weeks for him.